Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, this field does not look like it's going to grow anything, does it? Well, let's change that. Well, first things first, we're going to need some white glue. All right. Oh boy, if we can get it open. Hang on. I love when the cat glues itself down. Right. Notice I'm not putting the white glue directly on. I'm putting the white glue to the side first. Alright. Let's close. I'm going to take the white glue and we just go over the high caps of the rose. Alright. This could take a while, so I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Alright, I'm back. Um, just doing a little bit more touch-up. Basically, just across the highest parts that you can see. Just go across with some glue. This is for first growth field. All right. Now we go back and get a ground foam mix. We sprinkle that green all over that brown. Just like when we mossed up the rocks, pretty much. All right. Give it a second on there. I'm gonna go ahead and dump that right back off into the box. Now we got a couple rows of something. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to do a little bit taller crop. All right. This is nothing more than a scarab pad. You can get them at Walmart for 59 cents for three of them. All right. I'm sorry. I'm just cutting a small little piece of it off of here. Can't find my good scissors, so i got to use these. Now we see that? All right. Go ahead and dip the bottom end of it. And there's some white glue. Alright. Now we pick a row. I'm going to pick one towards the back. And just press it down in. Alright. Keep in mind, this is end scale. Alright. And what I'm going to do. This should have been 50-50 white glue. White glue and water. I don't think it is. Oh, man. No, it's just regular white glue. Alright. This is my 50 50 white glue water mix. Alright. Now that I got the right bottle out. Just go ahead and saturate that. Bring back in your green ground foam. That's just fine. Let me just roll it in there for right now. And you can always go back over it again. I guess you could call this more of a hedgerow. Since you're flowing a little bit better than the other one. 
going to do is I'm just going to remove that for a quick second and dump out this extra. As you can see, even what's not glued down sometimes stakes around. tractor back in here and that's an in scale tractor so you got a hedgerow pretty much barren field and I guess you could say anything from well pretty much anything right there in the front you can call it wheat just coming up you can call it um, potato soybean anything really uh, if you want to do wheat I'd say uh, just pour on a lot of glue um, I guess we can show you that too with just a 50-50 white glue mixture. And you just go across the whole thing. All right. And you use your paintbrush to tease it around. Get it across the whole thing. The wheat is planted so close together, and I do mean close together. It's only about an inch to an inch and a half apart between stalks, and that's including width. So if we go ahead and do a wheat or a, even a grass field let's say they're going to make hay out of it you just go the whole thing all right you cover the whole thing in glue for tightly planted crops it's only things like potatoes and uh cotton and stuff like that that's actually in rows Got potatoes cotton Pretty much anything you put in a corn planter, it's got some space in between it. So if you look around or look online uh, with a lot of the farmers out there, they will teach you that real quick and easy. All right. And you let that dry overnight, and then you tap it off in the morning, because the 50-50 white glue and water um, takes a little while to dry. <coughs> but as you can see, everything gets absorbed into it. And to lock everything down, I normally try to go through with a little bit more, even on top of what's already done. So that way it gets absorbed in. Because with my 50-50 white glue mixtures, I like to add in a little bit of dish soap. So that it breaks the surface tension of the water and allows it to flow. So I'll put my little tractor back for reference. As you can see, it looks pretty good. It's an in-scale field. I didn't I didn't think that fork spacing was right, but obviously sometimes the eye can trick you if you ain't got a scale model next to it. But there you go, that's how you do fields. Um that's how I've done fields for years. You could leave it plain brown and just make it look plowed. You could uh, add rows to it and actually plant something in there. It don't take much to do it. Um, heck, you could do this not even for corn. And with corn, I'd suggest to put something light brown up on top just to symbol, just to look like the tassels. But you could also use it as a hedgerow. And that's what I mostly use them for is hedgerows. If you want to do individual corn stalks, you could literally go through and do all that trouble too, but everything's really expensive. Um, this pack of scrubbers literally came from Kroger's, was 59 cents. All the rest of the materials that you've seen me use cost anywhere between a dollar to three dollars. And I didn't even use hardly any of them, so I mean. As you can tell, I did my whole layout, and I've still got plenty of ground foam left. So, you can get by with quite a bit. Hey, everybody. Well, now I've taken you through and showed you how to do an entire field 
I've showed you how to do rocks and moss cover them. Um, my next thing I guess I'm going to have to show you is how I do my roads. Because I'm running out of scenery ideas to show you guys. But scenery is not really that hard. For me, my main problem is structures, um, things like that. Things that actually do have to be perfect. Because <laughs> you don't want to live in a non-perfect house. Um, as for the IR MMO Big Build Contest version 2, it's wrapped up. Hey, congratulations to the winners. And I don't think there's been a single loser in the entire competition. We all did our best. We all did some great models. I put mine in there too, so that's why I'm saying we. Because that's a nice little group that we all decided to pitch in on. Hey, I liked everybody's video, to be honest with you. Alright. Um, I placed my five mystery votes through the email. And there's going to be something right above my head about to pop up. Uh, my email address is about to pop up. If you guys have any wants to help me out, that would be much appreciated because I'm about to start an 80 by 167 inch layout. At least I think that's how big it is. Alright, 80 plus 36 inches on each end. I've got two 36 by 80 inch hollow core doors and I have two 15 inch by 80 inch hollow core doors. My big, build, my big layout is a go. So if you guys got any in-scale equipment you want to get rid of, especially East Coast equipment, stuff like that, that you just want gone, please email me. We'll set something up, okay? Um, I could really use the help. It's going to be a big layout. It's going to be a nice layout. It's going to be a layout that I'd like to actually take and set up at shows. All right? Uh, just please feel free. Get a hold of me. Um, work anything out. I even pay shipping in some circumstances if I can afford it. Thanks. Bye.